do you possess? Alright, anyways. What's up, guys? Main Slave here. And today I'm going to be talking about my favorite Megadeth albums. Uh, my, my top ten favorite Megadeth albums of all time, guys. Uh, anyways. How many times am I going to fucking say anyway? Ah! I have uh, been getting a lot of people asking me what my top whatever Megadeth, Metallica, Slayer, all the stuff albums are. Um, and then I realized that I did do countdowns, but they weren't countdowns for the individual bands. I just did Big Four countdowns. So a lot of people are still curious as to what I think um, the individual bands are. And today I'm going to do Megadeth. Because we got, of course, Super Collider coming out in about a week from now. Probably will be a little bit less by the time I post this video. But you never know how it's going to go on the Bait Slave show. Anyways. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Ooh, yeah. Cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. I feel like the Macho Man Randy Savage right now because I feel coked out. Number 10, United Obama a Nations is number 10 because I couldn't think of any other album to put as number 10 because in my opinion the rest of them are just complete garbage. This one is kind of garbage because I really like Sleepwalker and I really like Washington is Next. And um... Number nine is going to be, of course, Endgame. And some people are probably like, why is Endgame so low on the countdown? Am I even going to be able to do this today, or am I just too coked up? Um, why is it so low on the countdown, Main Slave? Uh, because although I do like it, to me, it is nothing compared to some of Megadeth's other albums. Uh, it is very heavy, it's a very good metal album, in my opinion, is certainly at this point, we'll find out next week for sure, or at least I will for myself, if it is truly the best modern album that they've done, a lot of people have called it, including myself, the rest in peace of the generation, and as I mentioned before in my last video I did, kind of regret calling it that because it is just a straight ahead heavy metal album, it's not really a thrash album, especially by today's thrash standards, um, it's just a good album. It's a well-balanced album. It's a very, very good-sounding album. Um, and, of course, it is Chris Bodwick's first album. Amazing <coughs> soloist, lead guitar dude. Um, as I've been listening to Megadeth more and more lately, I can really appreciate the way that he slides solos. He has a very good, like, very smooth sliding effect that I wasn't very aware of back when I reviewed Megadeth. Anyways, number eight! Now, a lot of you guys are going to fucking be pissed off about this one. And I didn't do this on purpose, by the way. But when, after I saw it, I just said, whatever. Fucking bring it. Number eight. Risk. Yeah. Risk beat in-game and United Abominations. Down there. There it is. There's a dislike button. There it is. Go, go, go fetch it. Go hit that shit. Hit it. Hit that dis... Anyways. Why, uh, why Risk? Um, because, as I said in the review, I actually really like the album. Um... In my opinion, it has Dave's best vocal performance on it. And before you guys say, you sing it, you sing it, you wing the fuck out, you sing it. Well, actually, he sang pretty damn well on Risk, and uh, it's a good rock album. Um, I just love the fact that you get this hardcore thrash band uh, that comes out and makes a really good rock album that is just as good as a lot of the rock bands at the time, but they could still play hardcore thrash. And um, would I want them still doing music like this today? Maybe. I mean, after hearing Super Collider, which is pretty similar to a lot of the stuff on Risk and Cryptic Writings, maybe I'd want them to go back to this now that I think about it. Um, it's just a different side of Megadeth that I like. It's a completely different side. It's the furthest edge from what everybody really likes. But anyways, Risk good. Number seven, of course, is logically, right, Cryptic Writings, which is very similar to Risk, um, but instead of being half hard rock and half disco, it's half hard rock and half heavy metal. It has some really, really good hard-hitting parts on there. I liked it a lot compared to um, Youth in Asia, which I listened to right before, because they went back to E Standard, um, and to me it sounded 
Well, look who's fucking here! Yes! Fuck! Yes! Can you guys see the bitch? Did she turn her shit off? Did she fucking turn her shit off? Finally! Did she finally... I'm gonna fucking murder you. I'm gonna fucking murder you. You turn that goddamn song back on. You turn it back on and stop fucking playing mind games with me, you fucking dirty whore. Yeah, you turn it on. You f Number six is an album that I have uh, actually been appreciating a lot more lately, and that is The System Has Failed, um, which I actually consider to be um, better, actually, than Endgame, obviously, on this, on this list. But at the time that I was first listening to Megadeth, I thought Endgame was the best of the modern albums, and now 2004 is kind of, you know, it's it's pretty old. It's almost 10 years old. Um, but it is a really, really good one-off album, and it's a one-off album because originally it was supposed to be a solo album for Dave, so he got some interesting musicians in there. Um, really good musicians, by the way, of course, Chris Pullen and the drummer that everybody loves that I don't even know anything about, the guy who played with Frank Zappa, who is a fantastic drummer, by the way, one of the reasons why I like the album. Um, just a very, very, very good album. It's a very good listen. Um, it's probably the closest thing to Thrash that Megadeth has done since Rust in Peace, in my opinion, up to now. Um, it's very heavy. It's got a very heavy sound, really, really fast parts. Um, some parts that actually sound a little bit similar to uh, Rust in Peace and all the good old stuff, right? The good old stuff, anyways. So it's a really good album. If you guys haven't checked it out, it is in a pool of a lot of bland new Megadeth albums that get you. Check this one out. Give this one a listen along with Endgame, because I'm sure you're going to listen to Endgame. Listen to System. Give it a chance. Yes, System. Um, number five is so far so good. So fucking what? Um, yeah, uh, on the review that I did back when I listened to it, I talked more about the bad stuff, but honestly, there's a lot of stuff that I like on it. The guitar sound is phenomenal, it's fucking huge. The leads are actually really good. There's a lot of Dave Mustaine all over this album. Um, there's disappointing factors, there's weaker songs. Now, looking back on all of the um, lineup changes for this album um, and knowing that Dave had pretty much Rust in Peace and So Far written by the time they went in to go record So Far I think that he figured um, due to timing, how much time they had um, and due to the musicians that he had in the band at the time, he probably picked the easier of the two um, batches and then when he got the really good musicians in the band he then recorded Rust in Peace um, which is something interesting to think about but So Far So Good So What is a definitely a classic um, Really, really good album. If you like guitar, if you like Dave Mustaine, there you go. You're going to love this fucking album. Good shit. Number four is Killing Is My Business, and Business Is Good. Um, except for the production, this album to me is pretty much perfect. It is uh, thrash, speed metal, whatever you want to call it. It's fast as fuck, heavy as fuck. The guitar riffs are fucking iconic, even though the production is terrible and you can barely hear them. Still, they're amazing. You know, good music is good music. It doesn't matter where the fuck it's coming from. Um, but it is a really, really good album. Every single song is good on there. Even these boots is pretty decent. I gotta go ahead and say. Um, my other favorite, of course, is Walking Down the Cross, and um, the uh, the picked ones. Um, but yeah, no, Killing is my business. Good shit, right? Uh, now we're getting into the 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 big ones, right? Number three is. P-Cells, but who's buying? Fantastic album, in my opinion, a thrash masterpiece. Um, the guitars, once again, getting back to it. The guitars, the leads. Wow. I mean, the musicianship that, that, that was in the band, along with the production that they got by the time they got to Capitol. Um, masterpiece was born. A true classic was born. Some bands... You know, don't get any classics, but I think in the in the um, the situation with Megadeth, they have at least three, in my opinion, and P Cell is definitely one of them. Number two is this recently changed, by the way, but it is Countdown to Extinction, um, and it changed, by the way, recently in the fact that it used to I used to actually like Peace a little bit more than Countdown, but as time has gone by, the lineup is amazing and the album's amazing. Musically, I think Peace Cells is rivals 
um, rust in peace a little bit more, but just me and what I like and what I listen to more and what I enjoy more, I'd say about seven, eight times out of ten, I would actually listen to Countdown over Peace. Might have to do with something that I, you know, something with the fact that I'm a little bit sick of Peace at this point, but but that's all part of this, my favorite, my self-perception, um, my perception of the world, not my self-perception, that's self-concept, my perception of the world. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the things that make me me. Countdown's fantastic. It's another really, really good album with what I consider to be the best Megadeth lineup. Um, and uh, although, although it isn't as musically complex as Rest in Peace, um, it's still really good. It still offers up something something different. It's kind of dark. It's kind of commercially. It's a little bit more melodic. Uh, some of the moments on the album completely foreshadow where... Um, Megadeth we're going to go eventually um, but to me it is an amazing album and I can't get enough of it number fucking one yes oh, I already did that joke fuck man the oh, fuck you guys already know what number one is do I even have to fucking say the name do I even have to say the name of number one? Do I? Because number one is The World Needs a Hero. I'm just kidding. Of course, Rust in Peace is number one. Not only my favorite, but it's Megadeth's best album. If you don't agree with that, you're wrong. Okay? It's written in the Bible somewhere. It really is. That Rest in Peace is the best fucking heavy metal album of all time. Guitars, guitar sound, bass, bass sound, drums, drum sound, vocals, everything. Artwork, it's all perfect. It's all perfect. It has everything that you want out of a heavy metal album. It's all there. It's fantastic. I have nothing else to say. It's Rust in Peace. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.